Welcome to Simply Caroline, a podcast dedicated to women empowerment where we will discuss a bunch of different subjects such as life, parenting, love, business, money, relationships, healing, recovery, addiction, entrepreneurship, and so much more. A podcast I'll do my best to keep simple, fun, and relatable and bring you tools to help you better your life. So thank you for being here. And here's your host, myself, Caroline Blanchard. Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us again this week. I have a super special guest that we will see a few times this year. So our digital marketing expert, Melissa McClellan. Hello, Melissa. Hello, Caroline. Thank you so much for having me today. I am to be on this show and talk about all things marketing and you know life also as a female entrepreneur and all that fun stuff. So looking forward to chatting today. Awesome. And for you who can actually, who's, who are watching the video, you're probably thinking that Melissa could also give like really good beauty tips because she is <laughs> looking good, but that's not why she's here today. So uh, oh, Melissa, we'll talk about digital marketing because I feel like it's a subject that it's a word that we hear so often, but honestly, what really is digital marketing? Yeah. So it's, I feel like a lot of times when people hear digital marketing, they associate it with mainly posting on social media, mm -hmm. right? So it's okay, it's digital marketing is posting on my page and you know going live and things like this, organic strategies. But when I think of digital marketing, I kind of separate it into two pillars. There's the paid advertising, which is obviously putting a budget behind your marketing. And then there's also organic social media strategies. And so organic social media strategies, in my mind, I consider that separate from digital marketing. So digital marketing to me is something where there's usually a paid advertising component to it. And it really needs to be organized because I remember last yes. year I decided to venture <laughs> and I, I, I say this very lightly but venture Facebook ads and mm -hmm. you know it's funny because when you set your own budget you're like well I'll try with I don't know $20 a day and I'll see the results and you don't have all of the expert information on first of all fix your you know um, plan your budget and decide it and then really setting the demographics. I remember in the end, I was just like probably talking to, cause you know, you can select, uh, you wanna talk to female or male, you wanna talk to entrepreneurs, you wanna talk to both. I had an audience of potentially a million, which now with hindsight, I'm like, well, I really didn't, you know, own in enough into who I wanted to talk with. So needless to say, I spent a month of Facebook ads for nothing instead of hiring you <laughs> to show me exactly how to do it. So what's the difference between venturing like me and throwing your money out of the window and actually working with a digital marketing specialist? Right, so I think you already touched on one of the biggest benefits is you're not throwing money out the window, doing it yourself and going in blind. What is lacking a lot of times and why people don't get results that they expect when they go the DIY route is because they were lacking the foundation for their overall marketing, which is the strategy. And I won't go into too much depth about strategy, but to actually put that together for our agency, that is something that it, it takes an extensive period of time, sometimes four to six weeks to actually elaborate that strategy and making sure that when you do start putting your dollars behind that strategy, it's going to be the most effective for your, for your goals and your objective. And you're really maximizing the ad spend budget that you do have. So that is one of the, the huge pros to working with someone who knows what they're doing right out of the gate. And some people, um, they may have had success doing it themselves and that's fantastic. But usually you either got lucky 
or you have put a lot of money, wasted ad spend behind your DIY efforts, and now you finally figured out what you're doing. So by working with somebody who knows what they're doing right out of the gate, you are minimizing that experience where you're just flushing money down the toilet. <laughs> and time, and time. Yeah. I don't know how, how much time do you actually put into doing DIY campaigns, right? And this varies for a lot of people. Some people put a lot of time into it to try and figure out what they're doing and others just throw something up, just feel like hanging, hanging up a, a, a virtual shingle and say, hey, take a, look at my, look, take a look at my business and hope for the best. But you know, some people really do invest lots of time, um, also money into DIY courses. There's tons of them out there. You probably see them in your feed all the time. And <laughs> Either I've heard I've heard two comments from people that have gone that route. They've put a lot of money into the DIY courses is either they had implemented the practical steps. So, so kind of like what you talked about, they knew how to set the demographics they knew how to do these things um, and nothing happened. Um, or they got all these courses and somebody was actually just time yesterday. They end up sitting in this folder on their computer, all the materials, all the knowledge, it sits there and they say, you know what, I put all this money into courses and I have no time to actually learn it and become proficient in it. Or they just are busy business owners and like, actually, you know what, I don't have the time for this. So that is a big benefit to working with someone because you take, you, you take your hands off of the marketing for your business. So you can put your time where your business needs it. Yes, and actually I heard the best analogy this week on that. It's a bit like cleaning your house. You know, you can watch a bunch of YouTube uh, videos that will tell you how to clean your house and then you can even take courses or you can download the steps, but actually putting the hours to do a thorough good cleaning every single week, that's a whole other story, you know, and that's where you decide, well, do I want someone to come and help with this? or is it worth my time? And you know, another thing that I think is important to consider is to really figure out what's your hourly wage. And I'm talking about that mostly to entrepreneurs because when you have a job, usually it's pretty clear what your hour, hourly wage is in general. Uh, although that's often you, you're paid 40 hours and you work 60, but that's another story. But if, you know, evaluating what's your hourly rate and then deciding if you're underpaid or overpaid <laughs> to actually take care of some things that you could, could be passing along. And uh, I know in pre-interview we talked about, and this is all before jumping in our real subject, but in pre-interview we also talked about, you know, marketing budget. And I have my bachelor in marketing, I've studied it, I've spent so many years in it, and still, when I started my own business, I was like, huh, you know, when it takes off, and when I start making money, I'll invest in marketing. What do you have to say about that? So, that is, it, it's very common with new businesses, and it's something that if anybody is watching or listening right now, and they are considering, you know, maybe taking a part-time business full-time, I would definitely say to incorporate some sort of marketing budget into that. And it is something I don't know why it is so consistently overlooked in even the most basic, you know, business plans is, okay, how are you going to get your name out there? You can have the best idea in the world, um, whatever it is, the, the, the best course, or even if you want to open up a pizza shop, <laughs> that's fantastic, right? But um, I think... I think it also ties back to what you're saying with actually putting a value on your time, right? So you're going to put all this time up front for your new business and then you're going to launch it. So some organic ways, maybe if you have an email list, you can send out emails, you can post it to, you know, to your page. But the reality is all of that work that, that you've put in, if you try to grow your business organically, it's going to be a full-time job <laughs> in itself, just keeping up with all of your organic strategies and networking is another uh, common method, which is a great complement to your overall marketing strategy. 
But if you are relying solely on networking or maybe, you know, friends, family referrals, that pool is only so large, right? Especially with online businesses, it's, it's a numbers game. You need to reach a lot of people usually to reach your goals. And there's no better way to do that than with advertising on social media platforms. So you can definitely go the organic route, but if you look at the time that you're going to invest into that strategy, number one, you're most likely not going to meet your sales objectives. Um, if you sell anything at all, it is extremely difficult. Um, and you're, you're going to become frustrated also. That happens too. So there's that cost of getting frustrated. And especially if it's a new business, you may start to also doubt yourself, right? Nobody likes my offer. I can't do this. This is too much work. But the truth is you are investing your time in the wrong places, right? You're investing your time in the wrong places. And so, and I know this can be difficult for people who are just starting their businesses to even conceive of having a marketing budget. But there are lots of resources out there, um, kind of uh, an, an advanced strategy maybe to consider investors so that this may be something that's new to people who are just starting out, but something that as you grow and learn um, more about being in business as an entrepreneur, it becomes second nature to, to use the resources around you, um, like investors um, or, or grants. There's also grants available a lot of times. Um, we're also talking about crowdfunding and, and things like that. So if you really sit down and have an open mind, you can brainstorm a lot of different ways to fund that. So funding is definitely something that you should be considering and having a component of that dedicated to marketing and getting your business out there, it is going to expedite your business growth because the, the organic route is very slow. It's very tedious and often you don't get much return on your time investment. And not to, for, to, you know, diminish the fact that these days, everyone <laughs> is online. It seems like 2020, you know, really had online exploded. So now it's like even people who were not on social media are. And that's actually the bulk of our subject because we were talking about that and <clears throat> you, you made a comment and I said, that is so interesting that everyone is online, but not a lot of people actually know the strategy or, mm -hmm. you know, some do, but use it really well or really not. But regardless, you told me, well, there's pros and cons to mm -hmm. being online and being your own branding, because we hear that so much these days, you know, develop your personal branding. And when I first heard it, it was, you know, a few years ago, but I was like, what's my personal branding? I'm a mother and I'm in business. <laughs> this is so large. I just spoke about half of the population in the world. And you know, it doesn't work if you just go into that and you're like, okay, I'm gonna start doing that. And what I realize now is that part of my social media, like I would say probably not officially counted, but 50% of people are developing their personal brand. So how do you stick out from all of this? Yeah, so the key to sticking out online actually lies in effectively infusing your personality into your brand and your business. So a really good example of this that I like to use is we feel like we know celebrities, right? We feel like we know them. Um, and the reason is because we, we see them, we see their faces, we see their videos, we see them on, you know, TV, or um, actors, we see them in movies, we feel like we know them. And that's because their personality is always out there, we're always seeing it. And we have celebrities that you know, we like, and then we have celebrities that we don't like. And what are we making those judgments based on? We don't know them personally. We're making these judgments based on the content that they are putting out there. So that is the goal with infusing your personality into your business is you want to build that relationship and connection with the right people, right? Because you don't, 
I mean, even, even for yourself, right? You, you don't want to work with everybody under the sun, right? And not everyone under the sun is going to want to work with you either. And that is the beautiful thing. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't see why not, right? But um, the, the beautiful thing about this is that you are naturally attracting your audience to you and the right people by putting a personality out there. And there are a couple ways to, to do that effectively. Uh, one of the most effective ways to do that is with video. And I know that this can sound super scary to some people. I find there really is no middle ground. When I suggest video, the reaction is either, oh, great, I love video. I don't like taking the time to write content just throw me on camera and I'm good. Is that fine? I'm like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and then there's the other side where they're like, no, I'm terrified. I do not want to be on video. No, we have to think of a different way. And for anyone that is scared of video or they think that they don't look good on camera, I have heard every excuse under the sun to not incorporate video into your personal branding strategy. So I'm going to share two tips that has worked for my clients who are very hesitant to go down the road of incorporating video into their, um, into their branding. So the first tip is a practical tip. <laughs> if you're worried about how you, um, how you appear on video, investing in a very inexpensive ring light can be a game changer. Okay, <laughs> because running around your house trying to find a spot where the lighting is just perfect and this and all it's not going to happen. If it does, you you're lucky and you found a, a corner of your house that you should just dedicate to making video good. But a very inexpensive ring light can make all the difference. And the, one of the keys to making good videos and more content is having confidence. So that is something that it will it will boost your confidence. Um, and, and that's important. So it's not just about the aesthetics. It's about what makes you feel good. And that is one um, inexpensive tool that you can use to help um, to help you with your confidence. And the other one, this is going to sound uh, completely crazy to people who don't like video right now. But hear me out. Going live on your Facebook page, if you have a Facebook business page, the reason why this can be effective to get you out of your shell and more used to being on video is it takes the overthinking and the overanalyzing out of the equation. And if you don't like video, but you've tried it, I can guarantee you have sat there and done a million takes, rewatched them, tried to edit it, didn't like it. You put all this time into it and I bet you didn't even end up posting it. <laughs> and that back to attaching a value to your time, that is not an effective use of time. And if you continue to overanalyze, you're never going to take that leap, get out of your comfort zone and do it. So by going live, it does force you out of your comfort zone. It can be scary, but it also it comes across more uh, more authentically usually, and um, you can get outside of your head more so than if you are recording video because you're just you're in the moment. You're just communicating your thoughts. It's good to have an idea of what you want to talk about, but going live, you don't have to do it for you know ten minutes, fifteen minutes even 30 seconds to get used to it. Hey guys, this is what I'm doing today. This is what's on the agenda. Cool. Everyone have a great day. Get off of live, <laughs> right? Baby steps. So it's, it, and it also, sorry, one more thing. Um, and it also eliminates the need to uh, block so much time on your calendar, right? You can just hop on whenever you want to, when you feel inspired. And that's what makes it more enjoyable as well. If you're a little bit hesitant to, to go the video route. You, you described me perfectly two years ago, and funny enough, now I have a podcast, and I post it on YouTube, and I do live videos, <laughs> but I can add one piece of advice that is my own advice. Don't watch your videos. Like, I never listen to my podcasts or watch my videos. I enjoy them while I'm in the moment, but if you start reanalyzing re everything, like what I just did there, I would be like, oh my gosh, cut, let's do it again. I, I tripped over my words 
Um, and you're right. It's like when you try to make it perfect, you end up like redoing it, redoing it, redoing it. And you don't only lose time, you lose uh, confidence, you lose the passion of the message you actually wanted to say. Because at the end, like your 50th take, you're like, okay, people, <laughs> you know, you're, you're not talking the same way. So um, yeah, that's my advice. Don't do it in the moment and don't watch your videos. Or if you do, be good to yourself and don't self-criticize. Only watch them if you need to improve yourself. You know, um, and that I do sometimes, but I'm also, I also have like close friends that I'm very open with the, their opinions and I take it as constructive. So they're able to tell me, you know, when you say that or do that or whatever, or this is awesome, this is not. But again, this is another reason to have an expert beside you that will actually review your content and say, hmm, this you could tweak this way, this you could tweak this way. And what I really like about you, Melissa, is that um, you don't only, like, we can't book you just because we feel like it. You actually analyze. No, what's the right word? You look if you guys are a good fit first. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, because you you have to, or not you have to, What what I look for is, when I work with somebody, I am as all in <laughs> with them as you can possibly be. I am as committed to their success as they are. And so if you, if you get a feel for someone who's, you know, like, well, I, maybe I want to, you know, try this, but you're not getting the sense that they're, you know, ready to go all in with this, that we are, um, the same energy is not going to be there. And part of what works really well with a paid marketing strategy is being committed to being active on your social media pages and to putting your personality out there right because what we focus on is we want to get you sales bookings leads but without that kind of gross salesy vibe nobody likes that and it doesn't work with online marketing. So we will build a strategy for you and all of those technical pieces, that's all handled. But at the end of the day, what makes you stand out and what is beautiful about putting your personality into your business is it's you. You gotta show your face, you gotta put yourself out there. So that is one of the things that we definitely look for when we are assessing new client applications is, you know, are they, are they, going to commit to their end of the deal because nobody can replace you. That's what sets you apart. You know, everything else we can take care of, but that we need you to be you and let your personality shine. No, and actually what I love about what you just said is that you're setting up yourself for success and that's why your, you know, media company is so successful as well. And essentially that's what we should always do in, in life set up ourselves for success. So when you set goals, when you, you, uh, you know, thrive doing something, do something that is realistic. You can push yourself, but do something to always have successes instead of like aiming for the sky and, you know, too high, too fast. And then you have a failure because getting mm. back up from a failure is always harder than, you know, having a little success that we think is insignificant, but at least it was a success. So you are setting up yourself always to to succeed. And, and I like that. And my point of saying that is that you, you just don't take any customers, which you could because, you know, you're in demand, but you really go with the ones that you're jiving with and that you know that they're willing they wanted the success as much as you do. And that's actually a really good quality of yours too. Like it feels like it's your business when you're, you're actually like going in. And I feel like every single media company should be that. You know, when, when you hire them, they should feel like um, the success of the business is on them. Just mm -hmm. as us entrepreneurs feel when we actually put money into investing in our business you know, the end result is totally on our shoulders. And we're like, okay, please, that's going to be good. And so uh, super interesting. So what are the pros and cons of developing? Well, no, of, of really doing your, your personal online branding, but I will say in a do-it-yourself way. Yeah. 
So the pros of infusing your personality into your brand are you can, um, and so most entrepreneurs, they are, they love to be in a creative space. They have tons of ideas that they just want to get out there, multiple offers, multiple courses usually, or at least ideas for things that they want to develop. And the beautiful thing about building a brand around your personality is that you can also pivot easily. You can pivot easily. And when you do want to offer something new, um, that is, of course, speaking to, to the same audience. It does have to be similar. Um, you already have an audience that knows you. They're excited for your next offer. And it really helps you create a sustainable brand and have this, this nice audience of people who just love what you do, love to work with you, love your offers, love your products. So one of the pros is definitely um, sustainability in your business. Um, the second one is the ability to pivot if you want to. Um, third is attracting your, your ideal clients or customers authentically. They're in are in alignment with you. I know I mentioned that one already. Um, there's really the the pros of of putting yourself out there. I mean, it just the the, the list goes on. Um, the only cons uh, that I will mention. Uh, so number one, that is the time, right? You need to be committed to putting yourself out there authentically. Now. Not to say that you can't delegate certain pieces to your team or your assistant, but making the effort to, to go live, to be on video here and there is important. Um, now, one of, one of the cons uh, besides the time investment, because it is time, but for most of us, our businesses are our babies. So it deserves the proper nurturing, right? Um, that only you can give it. And secondly, the, the last con, and this is for people who are uh, probably a little bit more advanced in their business. One of the uh, big cons about building a brand around your personality is if you get to a point in your business where you would like to exit that business. So that is something that if you think about maybe authors or speakers um, that maybe you liked um, like 20 years ago, now they are, and they usually have courses and they do events and stuff like that, right? They're very, they're very well known. And then now they're later on in their um, careers. They maybe want to slow down and start to um, not be as involved in that business and, and hand over the reins to, to their team. So one thing to consider is that is if you are at um, a point in your business where you think that, you know what, I may want to sell this or I want to do something else that's completely different, you're going to have to consider that you're going to need a transition period where you start bringing in more people who can be the faces of your business before you completely exit that business. So some people, um, what they will do is they will bring in, sometimes it may even be family members, um, like a son or a daughter, someone, and then slowly, you have to do this kind of <laughs> um, uh, strategically, slowly, they will start to bring in the other experts who are eventually going to be the faces of the business on to their live events. They invite them in as speakers or they're um, a guest um, author in one of their books or something like that. They slowly start to bring these people in that are going to carry the business forward. So the legacy of the original um, personality will always be there, right? It's part of their branding, but it's new faces of the business. So that's a little bit more advanced and a little bit longer down the line, but it is something to consider. And that's a great tip. I've seen some businesses, unfortunately, that when the main person leaves, it's done because the main person yes. was the business. So yes, also have an exit strategy when you want to, yeah. when, when you, you think exactly. about it. And I think that should all be in our three to five year plan anyway. You know, what mm -hmm. do you want to do with your business? Of course, we all want to say, well, I want to do it until I'm 80, but you know, no, not true. Not everyone thinks that. But anyway, Melissa, if people have questions or they want to reach you, how can they do that? 
So I would, uh, I would suggest the easiest way to get in touch with me is to visit my website. So it's www.meteor.net, so M-E-D-I-O-R. And there is um, a spot on the homepage where you can book a consultation with me if you are interested in applying to be one of our clients. And um, there's also an option on the website to send me an email as well. So that would be the place to go to my website um, if you would like to uh, talk to me about your marketing for 2022. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to come and offer us like golden nuggets like that. You know, I think that for you, it's all you're like, well, this is all simple stuff for us. A lot of us, it's it's like another language. It's like, what? <laughs> um, I should do this. I shouldn't do this. So thank you for your expertise. And um, dear listeners, Melissa will be back in three months. So you can send us questions if you want. You can send us subjects you would like to hear about. We're flexible. If uh, if we don't pick yours, we will pick another amazing ones. But Melissa is coming back four times this year. So um, I think that by the end of the year, we will cover quite a bit of the digital marketing aspects because it is now a reality of any business, I think. <laughs> so thank you so much, Melissa. And do you have any last word for our auditors? And I should say our listeners, because auditors is a word I just took in French and translated it to English, but that doesn't mean the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, uh, right now uh, it's still early in 2022. So I would say if you had been feeling pressure to, you know, get your strategy and your business plan together for the year within this first month of 2022, don't stress about it. Any time is a good time to plan what you're going to do for your business for the, for the upcoming year. So you haven't missed the boat. And, um, but definitely I would make it a priority on your to-do list because we have a whole year ahead of us for a success. And with a little bit of planning, you can grow your business beyond what you probably expect that you could, which is a little bit of time put into the planning. Amazing. Well, thank you, Melissa. And thanks everyone for being here and, uh, we will see you next week.